at church. Y'all got to tell everybody what's going on. It's great here. But Jesus had a problem. How can there be a problem when we see people getting delivered, healed, shouting, dancing, praising God? They didn't even know God. Glorifying him. We all would leave here on cloud nine. But Jesus saw something else. And the word says he had compassion. One thing that we're missing today in ministry is compassion for people. Compassion is the, was the engine that drove Jesus' ministry. Why have we lost compassion for one another? We all are so caught up in our own issues that we walk past dying people every day. We've lost compassion for our brothers and our sisters. You know, and I know we're saying, well, nobody has compassion on me. But, you know, the word gives us the principle. Amen. The word tells us that if we give, it shall be given unto us. If I give compassion, it's going to come back to me. Amen. We're waiting for something to happen, but we have to activate it by giving first. If I give it, and it might not come back from the person that I give it to, but I tell you what, it will come back to me. I'm a witness. My parents are a witness. They'll always take in college students. They'll take in somebody. And I'm like, Mom, why are you always doing that? They can't pay you back. She said, I do it because one day I would hope if you're in that situation, somebody will take care of you. I give it so that it will. God is not a man that he should lie. If you sow it, it will come back to you. But we don't have compassion, Elder, because we're not giving it to one another. But compassion will allow you to see things that others don't see. We all talk about, you know, you have a gift of discernment. But if you don't have compassion, I really don't know if you got discernment or you trying to be nosy. Because I don't think God would show somebody something about me and they don't care about me. Even if they got to tell me something I don't like, if it's out of love, I can receive it. But if you don't love me, that ain't discernment. You're trying to be nosy. How can you have discernment and you don't have compassion? You ain't got to like me. I don't care. It said he had compassion for the multitude. He has preached, he has taught, he has healed, and now he's saying, but I have compassion for them. I feel, I'm feeling something, I'm feeling a burden for them. Mm. I'm feeling a burden for these who have been with me for three days, for those who have shown that they love me, for those who have been consistent. Hello, somebody. For those who have stayed with me when others have left, they've stayed with me for three days, haven't asked me for anything, haven't sought me for anything, but they've been right here at my feet while I've sat here for three days, and I have compassion for them. Why did he have compassion? He said, because they've been with me for three days and they haven't had anything to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. Jesus was a bad man. He said, I see you shouting. I see you dancing. You couldn't walk, but now you can. You couldn't see, but now you can see. You couldn't talk, but now you can talk. You were injured, but now you're whole. But I still can't send you away like this. Because if I send you away now, you'll faint on the way home. How many of you understand? The battle is not here. But the battle is when I'm on my way home. And Jesus understands. You can shout all you want. You can dance all you want. You can smile in my face all you want. But I see, baby, that you're still hungry. Can I go a little deeper? Can I go a little deeper? 
Elder, how is it that we can be in the presence?